Beloved in the Seventh Day Adventist Church, beloved in the Seventh Day Adventist Church, this is a very urgent, urgent message, a very urgent, urgent message dealing with um, Amendment 2, Amendment 2 being passed in Alabama, Amendment 2 being passed in Alabama here in in, the, in uh, this state that I live in. I'm in this resident of Alabama in the city of Huntsville, Madison County. Now, beloved in the Adventist Church, here recently, um, Amendment 2 was signed in law after there was a vote taken on it. I didn't vote for it or against it because if I would have voted for Amendment 2, I would have been um, voting to strengthen the evangelical and Catholic, pro-life Catholic position and the union of church and state, which is the image of the beast, which would unite church and state and, and, and go against my right as a seven day minutes as I have stage. But if I would have voted against Amendment 2, um, I would have been voting um, for abortion, I would have endorsed the murder of innocent babies. Now look here what this book here by James L. Hayward Sr. says, the time of the end, it says, um, one of the most shocking and yet one of the most prevalent sins of, of this generation is a murder of unborn infants. Let those who think this is a small sin read Psalm 139.16. They will see that even the unborn child is written in God's book, and they may be so well assured that God will not pass unnoticed the murder of such children. That's that thing from Review and Herald, November 30th, 1869, by Sister White. Also look at this. Priests and popes have made laws forbidding people to marry, celibacy of priests, and secluding them in monasteries. These laws or restrictions were devised by Satan to place men and women in unnatural positions. Thus, Satan has tempted human beings to disregard the law of marriage as, to, as a thing unholy, but at the same time, he has opened the greatest door for the indulgence of human passion. Thus, have come into the existence some of the greatest evils which curse our world, adultery, fornication, and the murder of innocent children born out of wedlock. Signs of the Times, August 30th, 1899, 10 Manuscript 198. That's Sister White's comments on Now look here what Pat Robinson says about abortion and how that unites church and state in these ass days. One of the Christian, Pat Robinson on the Christian Coalition stated at their national leadership meeting. I was surprised to see a rapidly growing religious political organization of evangelicals, pro-family Catholic, and they're working to reverse the moral decline in America. Now we know that, you know, Sister White says when the leading church of our nation say you're not a compost of doctrine, which are held by them in common, then we saw see the lying wonders of Satan in the in the, in these last days and and, and the Sunday law being passed in his ass days, beloved in the Adventist church. So that is a sign that we're living in the last days. When we see the union of church and state um, being united in our country, that's when the Sunday law gets to be ready to pass. So the abortion issue is going to be a state by state issue. But the 14th Amendment, once it's repealed by Congress at a constitutional amendment up in the U.S. Uh, US government, that's going to give states right state back their back their rights, and all these laws in the states' books, like Sunday blue laws and abortion laws, will culminate to get them to have a national Sunday law on a nationwide basis. In the in in the, in the judicial system, the Supreme Court will declare that Sunday is the Bible Sabbath, and force people to worship on Sunday in his ass days, beloved. And look here at this statement right here: abortion issue. Um, used to change constitution on church and state separation. In order to have a national Sunday law in the United States, efforts are put forth to break down the separation of church and state written in the U.S. Constitution. Harvard law professor Lawrence Later, who was quoted uh, eight times in the Roe versus Wade abortion trial, describes how the Catholic Church is using the abortion issue to do this. It must be a significant part of Vatican strategy that abortion becomes 
the dominant issue of the United States. While its legislation has been virtually ignored in such Catholic countries as Poland and Italy, which has the highest abortion rate in the Western Europe, Cardinal O'Connor and Cardinal Law have termed, turned abortion into the cutting edge of the right-wing assault on separation of church and state. It is the most easily dramatized weapon um, in, 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 in their arsenal. Abortion has just become the prime instrument of the assault on First Amendment separation of church and state. Abortion represents the cure, the, the core of the Catholic Fundamentalist White House Alliance. Catholic Protestant and U.S. government represents the best possibility of a breakthrough for the conservative agenda. If abortion rights can be destroyed, all the objections can be um, won more than more easily. Now, beloved in the Seventh Adventist Church, this warns us to be ready for these ass days because Donald Trump is the son of our president. We see the Republicans control the Senate. We see they control the White House. We see they have two SCOTUS Republicans on the Supreme Court. They control and they're, and they're about to stack up all the under courts, all the appellate courts, the, the, the district courts, the 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 uh, the courts under the Supreme Court, beloved in the Adventist Church. So things are about to change, and we need to get ready for these ass days because once the Fourteenth Amendment is repealed, the new Attorney General, after Judge Sessions, all he has to say is, "Let's go ahead and." And, and, and not enforce the Johnson Amendment, and we need to unite church and state and give states back the rights to enforce some legislation in their local states and not uphold the 14th Amendment and make the borders restrictive for people to come into so that our country will not be a sanctuary for fleeing people from fleeing people from other countries or escaping persecution and poor wages in their country, beloved, in the Adventist church. And so we need to pray in these ass days, and we're ready for these ass days, they were ready for the time of Trump. The time of Trump is coming upon us quick, beloved. With Donald Trump restricting gun rights to American citizens because of the shooting in Parkland, Florida, and and uh, over in in Nevada, Las Vegas, Nevada, and when he when he is uh, making Jerusalem Israel's capital, and we know the state is going to personally crash and come over to Jerusalem is at in his ass days to um um. Claim that Sabbath has been changed to Sunday by his imps and, uh, and impersonating dead loved ones and impersonating um, uh, famous people with, um, you know, all these things shaping up will let us know that Sunday is on its way, beloved. And with Korea having a time of, North Korea claiming they have a time of peace in this country, a, a great time of peace and prosperity and no war. All these things happen when there's a car piece of safety and you just suddenly struck upon them as a woman travail and they should not escape, beloved. That's why son, that's why Donald Trump is the son of our president. He's sons of our president because of the abortion issue, because of the Union Church of State, because of the repeal of the Johnson Amendment, because of the Fortunes Amendment being repealed, because of um, the, the gun rights, the Second Amendment being repealed, because the First Amendment being repealed. All these issues us to know that Donald Trump is the sons of our president, beloved. Get ready, get ready, get ready for the fierce wrath flows upon you. God bless. Mary Martha.